Physics lecture number seven, drawing vector diagrams. A scalar quantity is just a size or a magnitude. Examples of scalar quantities would be 10 meters per second or 20 pounds of pressure. Now a vector has both size and direction. So here's some examples of vectors. 10 meters per second west, okay, size and direction. 20 pounds of pressure pushing down. 20 pounds is the size and the direction is pushing down. Speed is a scalar quantity. Uh, 10 meters per second is a scalar quantity because it tells us how fast an object moves but not its directions. So 10 meters per second is the speed. It just says how much but not which way. Uh, velocity has both speed and direction so it is a vector. 10 meters per second west gives a speed of 10 meters per second and a direction of west. All right, so this is a vector, a magnitude and a direction. We use arrows to represent vectors. For example, suppose we were to draw an arrow representing a vector of six miles north. So what we'll do is we'll draw an arrow pointing up to indicate six miles north. So what I'm going to do is See if I can do this correctly. I'm going to draw a arrow and I'm going to make it six centimeters uh, long. So let's see if I can do this right. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. We'll do that. Done right there. So this vector is six centimeters long. So the length of the vector, six centimeters, represents the magnitude of the vector, six miles. So six centimeters uh, represents six miles. It's pointing up. So the upward pointing direction represents the uh, northern part. And then this part of the vector right here, this is the head of the vector, and this end right here is the tail. All right, so the tip of the arrow is the head, and the other end of the arrow is the tail. The arrow points up to indicate that the vector is pointing north, and we make the arrow six centimeters long to represent a scalar quantity of six miles. So that's how we use a vector or arrows to represent vectors. The length represents the uh, magnitude and the way the arrow is pointing represents the direction. Now suppose we want to draw a vector to represent a velocity of 90 meters per second in a direction 30 degrees north of west. Well we start by drawing x and y axes and label them with compass headings. So we draw a y-axis and an x-axis and we label them with compass headings and then let's see how we can uh, start drawing this 30 degrees north of west can be read as 30 degrees above the west axis so we're going to draw a line starting at the origin of the graph right here and have it point 30 degrees above the west axis so here's the west axis and it's going to be 30 degrees above the west axis so you're going to need a protractor and measure 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is right there. All right. And then I'm going to do part of this in pencil. So starting from the origin, and we draw it like that. So this is just a rough draft like that. Okay. And then. Um, so this is going to be 30 degrees right here, and then to represent the 90 meters per second, we'll draw the line 9 centimeters long. So 9 centimeters, let's see, alright, so it's going to end right there. Okay, so now we can fill everything in. Do, do, do. Like that. Okay. All right, so this is going to be nine centimeters long to represent the magnitude. 
30 degrees uh, north of west, so that's going to be 30 degrees right here. So that's 30 degrees above the west axis or 30 degrees north of the uh, west axis. So let's sort of summarize. 30 degrees north of west can be read as 30 degrees above the west axis. We draw a line starting at the origin of the graph and have it point 30 degrees above the west axis. And to represent the 90 meters per second, we draw the line 9 centimeters long. All right, so this vector is pointing 30 degrees north of west. So this is 30 degrees north of west. And it's also pointing 60 degrees to the west of south. See, this angle right here is 60 degrees. So, or 60 degrees to the west of north, or 60 degrees to the left of north. So, 30 degrees north of west can be expressed as 60 degrees west of north, and that's because the angle between the west axis and the north axis is 90 degrees, and 30 plus 60 gives me 90 degrees. All right? So, that's how you draw uh, diagonal vectors. If, you don't, if they don't give you north, south, east, or west, if they give you, you know, 30 degrees to the north of west or 20 degrees south of east, that's how you do it. And we can solve problems by drawing vectors and adding them together. So here are the rules for drawing and adding vectors. Now these rules aren't going to make sense until you see them done, but we're going to read them out anyway. So keep these in the back of your mind as we go through the process of uh, drawing these. So the first rule is you draw the first vector, and I like to put a big dot at the tail of the first vector. And then uh, you place the tail of the second vector at the head of the first vector. And then you draw a line from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second. So let's do a problem that illustrates these three rules. A man walks 12 meters north, then 8 meters east. Find his displacement and direction. So we'll first start by drawing a 12 centimeter line pointing north to represent the first vector. So the first vector is 12 meters north. Let's draw a 12 centimeter line pointing straight up. So I'm going to do it in pencil first. <laughs> so let's see here. All right, 12. There we go. All right, so I'm going to do this. Can we see it on the inside? Yeah, okay. So, just do it straight up like that. So that's our first vector. And then we'll ink it in. Look, sorry. There. Okay, not the prettiest, but uh, it works. All right, so our first vector to represent 12 meters north, we draw a line pointing up or north, and we'll make it 12 centimeters long to represent 12 meters. Now the second vector is uh, 8 meters east, and so uh, what we can do is uh, 8 meters east, um, let's see. So that means that the second vector kind of looks like this. All right. It's, uh, all right. Ugh. excuse me. Okay, so we can write that with an eight centimeter line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this second vector and move it over so that the tail of the second is at the head of the first. And before I forget, every time we draw these problems, you always put a big dot at the tail of the first vector. All right, so here's the tail of the first vector. I always put a big dot next to it. All right, and then we do that. All right, so I'm just basically gonna slide this over and put the tail of the second vector at the head of the first. So, we'll do this. Put 
Okay. All right, so this is eight centimeters. Like that. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line from the tail of the first vector to the head of the second vector. Okay, so to review the steps, we drew the first vector, we drew the second vector, and when we drew the second vector, we put the tail of the second vector at the head of the first, and then we drew a line from the tail of the first to the head of the second. Now, the uh, final line, draw, line drawn here is the resultant. All right, so this line is called the resultant. And if you measured the length of the resultant, uh, it would be 14.6 centimeters. So 14.6 centimeters, approximately. All right. You're not going to get exact answers, and you might be off a little bit. But if you're close to this, you're doing all right. Now, if you convert this to meters, we would call this 14.6 meters. So um, our man's displacement who walked 12 centimeters and 8 centimeters or 12 meters and 8 meters, his displacement from where he started to where he ended is 14.6 meters. All right. Now, if we make the uh, tail of this first vector the origin of a graph um, to figure out the direction, so what we do is at the tail of the first, you draw compass points. So this is going to be south, and this is going to be west, and this is going to be east, and this direction is north. All right, well, if we make the tail of this first vector here, the origin of the graph, uh, the resultant, this line right here, points 35 degrees to the right of north, or 35 degrees to the east of north. So if you take your protractor and measure this angle right here, it's going to be pretty close to 35 degrees. All right. So um, this direction then is 35 degrees to the east of the north axis. 35 degrees east of north. All right. And by the way, this angle right here is 55 degrees. So another possible answer is that we could also call this 55 degrees above or to the north of the east axis. North or above the east axis. So our resultant vector is 14.6 meters, 35 degrees to the east of north. Or you could say 14.6 meters, 55 degrees to the north of east. All right. So that's how you draw vectors to solve how far someone's moved and in what direction they're moving. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been physics lecture number seven, drawing vector diagrams.